Hello. Okay, so I want to talk about the power of silence because I think that this is a really important technique for a variety of reasons. But simply, if you can sit alone in silence or if you can sit in company in silence, I really think you have the upper hand. And this is definitely a skill that's developed because <laughs> we have so much around us all the time. We never have to be alone if we don't want to. We never have to be in quiet if we don't want to. It is absolutely a skill that you put effort into practicing, into engaging in, into being very intentional about because it's just so easy to keep the stimulation. Now, not only do I think it is a skill if you can be alone and quiet. And to ease into it, I suggest going outside. If you, whenever I wanna eat something and I'm like, why do I keep wanting to go to a screen? I just wanna eat. Every time I go out on a deck or I step outside, it's so much easier. It's, I, and I don't know if it's like more of an organic stimulation that we're accustomed to or, or what it is, but there's no doubt that being outside alone and being outside like in quiet is I think much easier than being in your walls or next to your phone um, <laughs> in silence. But we know about the meditation and the insight and the intuition and that is I think so key and so paramount that you have access to that, right? And honestly, to be very blunt, I think if there's something where you don't like yourself, if you don't want to sit in silence, and I know that's a black and white statement and I don't want to speak in absolutes, but I do think that there is an element that we don't want to sit with our own thoughts or we don't want to sit with ourselves or it makes us anxious in some way. And I really feel like there's something to that as far as not feeling productive enough or not feeling worthy of rest or simply I don't like how I think of myself. So if I just ignore that entirely and engage in something else, that's a lot more comfortable. It's a theory I have. But in the realm of conversation, I think this is very, very very, very powerful because even in the new age community, we describe the universe as a vacuum, right? So if there is something empty to keep the balance, something else comes and fills its space, right? And then we do this type of inner work to make sure it's something more benevolent or something that serves us more, right? This is the dialogue in the new age community. Now, in conversation, if there is silence between you and someone else, someone's gonna fill the space. Someone is going to fill the vacuum and I don't want it to be you. And here's why, <laughs> because it's more powerful and more powerful for a couple of reasons. Aisha K. Faines is someone I studied from and she talked about information asymmetry. So this is when someone knows more than the other party. And she was speaking in terms of dating, how women naturally tend to be more conversational, more verbal and taking care of things and setting the space, right? So we are more inclined to fill the space with words. And probably even there's an element of feeling inclined to make things comfortable, right? So if there's an awkward silence, like let's, let's soothe it almost. And that's not just women, but this was some of what she was speaking in. And I have noticed that whenever I ask someone a question, they'll answer it. But if I stay quiet, they'll keep answering and they'll elaborate even more and they'll think of another example. And that the longer that I am quiet, the more that they fill the space, which is what Aisha is talking about, the information asymmetry. and. Essentially, information is power, knowledge is power. So if someone is giving you more information, 
about themselves, about a topic, whatever it is, that is absolutely more beneficial for you. But the key is not to jump the gun, is to allow the space, allow the vacuum for something to fill the space. My father is a very successful salesman. I mean, he loves selling. And he has told me time and time again, the best sales advice is ask them what brought them here today and then shut up. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That, that is it. And that is what he implores every time. They, they just come in and he goes, what can I help you with today? What brought you in today? Why are you seeing me here today? And then you're quiet and they will tell you everything, right? And so then he is more equipped, one, to help them, right? And then he has more information. And this is a cool psychology thing because we even think about all of the pushy salesmen who are like, let me tell you about this, how great this is, how cheap this is, what this will do for you, blah, 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 right? The more that they give us all of this information, the more resistant we are. We don't want to engage with them. We don't want to buy from them. And I thought that was really brilliant because people are comfortable talking about themselves and they're more receptive to people who are not pushing them in a way, right? So I also want to just take a moment to say very clearly, Power is neutral. So as I'm having this conversation to you about being in a position of power and allowing for silence, right? For other people to talk, for other people to tell on themselves, for other people to tell them what exactly is the problem they have and why they wanna be your customer potentially, for you to help solve that, right? Selling. These are all things that can be taken either for good or for not, right? Information is power. Knowledge is power. And there are plenty of world leaders and change makers we've seen who have taken information and influence and created them in beneficial ways and have taken information and influence and have taken them in non-beneficial ways. So... I am always, always, always for helping and the better good, right? But first and foremost, yourself, always, always yourself. So I really do feel that especially as time is continuing on, less and less people are gonna be able to sit in silence, less and less people are going to have the capability to wait. And it is really a powerful tool. It is really, really a powerful tool. And it puts you in a position to one, further help a need that someone has, for two, allowing you to sit with more information before you make your decision. And then for three, for you not to jump the gun in haste and filling the space and wanting something done, blah, 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 blah. Like you're playing a longer game here. And I think that's says a lot to someone's sophistication and honestly a lot to someone's maturity. If they can see the long game, if they can see the vision, if they can take a moment and absorb and hear and listen to all of these collective bits, whether it's just you and you or you and someone else or you in a boardroom, right? Whatever it is, it's all important. But yeah, that's, that's what I have. I think it's necessary. I think it's absolutely necessary to see the type of success that you want to see in yourself. Um, and you can tell people's different development, personal development, with how long they can wait for something, with how well they listen to someone, with their time in silence. There is like a sophistication. There's a sage-like quality. There's some sort of wisdom. There's a maturity that's there. And it's something we all pick up on, but I really think that's just it, is you can just sit quietly. And that's pretty cool. But as always, just some thoughts. <laughs>